Well, good morning. Uh, my name is Mike Bryan. I'm a volunteer with the Southern Arizona VA in Tucson, Arizona. Uh, today's date is Wednesday, July the 22nd, 2015. And uh, we're in, uh, interviewing Rosemary Christensen, uh, who was in the United States Navy. Uh, we're at the VA hospital in Southern Arizona doing the interview. So, uh, uh, Rosemary, why don't you give me your full name and you know, your birth date? Alice Rosemary Christensen. I was born 11 11 1934, Armistice Day. Armistice. Which they don't call it anymore. But they still honor that day. Oh, yes. Yeah. Oh, yes. Uh, wh where were you born? 11 11. When? I mean, oh, where? Where? Colorado. In Colorado. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. Uh, just kind of give us a real kind of a quick overview. Um, you, know, you you enlisted. Yes. How, how old were you when you enlisted? 18, fresh out of high school. Uh -huh. Was that a, a little bit? Of, was that unusual for for a young lady to be enlisting in the in the armed services? Uh, no, the reason I went in it wasn't because of military. Uh, I have two older sisters, ten and eleven years older than I am, from my mother's first marriage, and my ten year old older sister went into the navy, and. <laughs> I loved her uniform, <laughs> <laughs> and that was about the only reason I, I, I just loved that uniform, you know. Yeah. And uh, I have two aunts that are uh, nurses, and my mother wanted me to be a nurse, and I wasn't having anything to do with that. So as soon as I graduated in June, I enlisted in the Navy. And I didn't know what I was going to do, but I, that's where I wanted to be. Well, talk a little bit about what, where you went for, uh, for training and what kind of training you got and how you ended up settling into the occupation that you had. Uh, okay, I went in in July 20th, 1953, and I got out July 19th, 1957. At the time, the training was all done in Bainbridge, Maryland. And uh, boot camp was nine weeks, and we had the traditional learn everything Navy. And somewhere in there, you had to take a test to see where you were best, where they could put you. Your aptitude test. And uh, I ended up, I'd never had any experience, but I, I ended up in the medical. And after the medical, uh, after graduation, we went on the same base to medical course school for nine months. And that's where I got all my training, which came in handy because as it ended up, I became a nurse. <laughs> After I was out of the military, I became a nurse. But that's where my training took place. So what, what was the mood of the country like at that point? Because you were... You know, I was so young, so naive, I really didn't read newspapers at that time that much, you know, didn't really know what was going on, you know. I was just young and impressive and happy to be out on my own, away from my parents. <laughs> <laughs> Typical teenager. Uh-huh, uh -huh. <laughs> okay. 18, but probably should have been only 16. I mean, I was very immature for my age, but uh, I tell you, I, I loved all four years of it. I, I loved it. Uh, did you have any recollection of World War II? No, just on, on um, the day it ended. And, and, what uh, do you remember about that day? Just that everybody was celebrating, you know, and uh, happy that it was finally over. And of course we didn't have TVs back in, well, some people had TVs. Mm -hmm. We just had the radio, you know. but. Uh, I was, oh, okay, you know, not really that impressed, just to, you know. Yeah. Well, what, then there was a period of time before the Korean War started. Mm-hmm. Now, do you have more recollections of that, or? No, you really no, have, no, okay, no, okay. just really. And then, and then when you signed up and you went in, the Korean War was still going. Yes, just very, it was at the, going toward the tail end, which people, you know, we didn't, I didn't know, so I said, 
I was surprised when it ended, you know, so fast. But I never bothered reading typical teenager, reading the newspapers, what was going on. You know, I just wanted to get the heck out of Denver. <laughs> <laughs> so, so it really didn't uh, occur to you that you might be deployed to Korea? In no, some, some heavens, no, no. Uh -uh. Mm -hmm. Were women being did they even have the did they even have that word deployed in those days? <laughs> <laughs> well, what did they call it? Sh shipping I don't out. know. <laughs> <laughs> being in the military, you yeah. know. Yeah. Yeah. So what 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 was your job? Uh, Sam was a nurse, a medical corps wave. I, I ended up after I graduated. I was stationed at Portsmouth, Virginia, and I'm not. I don't know if you know, but Portsmouth is just right across the bay from Norfolk. But we had our own just little tiny uh, hospital and uh, no dispensary, just a hospital there. And we were, our quarters were there. At, at that time, they didn't allow dependents to live there. But I was fortunate enough years later to go back and visit, because we moved to Virginia, visit that. And uh, they had built a bigger hospital, and the barracks where I was had been converted to uh, dependents. Mm -hmm. But so I was there at, at Portsmouth, and for I think just a year and a half. Then I got to move on down the coast, or did they call it up the coast? <laughs> I'm not sure. To uh, Camp Lejeune, North Carolina, which is one of the biggest Marine Corps bases. And there I worked at the outgoing dispensary was all just the, uh, the dependence dispensary and the military, you know, instead of going to the main hospital, we, we took care of them there. And it was the same as the nurse, we did everything. Yeah. So. Well, I, I was in the Marines and, and actually was at Camp Lejeune for a while. Really? And after, after Paris Island, went to Camp Lejeune. Oh, wow. And then my first permanent duty station was in Norfolk. You're kidding. Yeah, so I was kind of uh, trailing you around yeah. later. <laughs> yeah, because they don't even have Portsmouth at, or uh, Bainbridge, Maryland is, is no longer a training center. Yeah. And, uh, but uh, do you remember when you first go on the base, there was a building 52, a big infirmary. I just, I remember big buildings, but I don't remember numbers. <laughs> <laughs> it was at the time across from one of the big baseball fields. And uh, as you very first come on the base, that's where it was on the right hand side, big building. They took care of everything, dental, medical, everything. So what's, what, what kind of a feelings were you getting? Here you are, you're, you, you made it out of Denver, mm -hmm. you know, you, you broke loose. <laughs> and, and you not only broke loose, but you're on the East Coast. I mean, you're pretty far away from home. Right, and stuff. right. What's, what kind of feelings go with that? Um, I, I wasn't homesick because my parents and I didn't really get along that well. I was just happy to be away and making new friends that came from all over. Mm -hmm. And uh, the same way in, when I was at uh, Portsmouth, it was, uh, I, I had my first occasion to be where they said uh, military personnel, dogs and blacks stay off the grass. Mm -hmm. And when I was growing up, we our buses, West Street cars, buses, you automatically walk to the back of the bus. In Portsmouth, first time I ventured out on a bus, I did my normal thing, walking to the back of the bus, and I got the ugly stairs, and I couldn't figure out what was going on. I got back to the base, and my girlfriend had been there a while, and she said, it's because just the blacks go to the back. They're not allowed up in front. So, so Navy personnel are allowed to sit up towards the front. Right. Yeah. So, in fact, one of the girls she was there before I was it was a black lady. She had a. She was so devastated because of the way people treated her. She had to be transferred out out of the state. And but that's the way it was back in the early fifties, you know. And uh, but I had my first hurricane there. Oh really? I was out walking and I didn't know it was a hurricane. I just come <laughs> back from leave and walk along the bay, 
And I weighed just a few pounds more than I do now, but it picked me up and set me down. Yeah. And I got to the hospital because I had been working in an in a in, uh, inpatient unit, and they had were having an outbreak of uh, baby dysentery in the newborn, so I got transferred. So I get over to the hospital, and they said, don't you know there was the tail end of a hurricane? <laughs> you know, I'm from Denver. I'd never been in a hurricane before. <laughs> That was my first hurricane, but uh, I just loved every minute of it. I, I was free and I could do what I wanted to do, with the, you know mm -hmm. exceptions. And I got in trouble there in Portsmouth because my whom at the time girlfriend kept getting me in trouble all the way to North Carolina. We traveled, but we went off base without our security cards. Sure enough, we got caught coming back in. So um, we. I don't know if it was because of that or because they needed help in North Carolina, but we got transferred out within the month. We got transferred out. <laughs> Tell me a little bit about the, the women that you worked with or the, or the men or you know, the, the people that you were working with. Tell me what? A little bit about you know, how, how, how did you get along with people? Oh, or, got along or, fine or, with everybody. The men, you couldn't have asked for, for a better people than them. There was none of what goes on now, of the sexual thing, you know. That was not heard of back in the 50s, you know. They were just like your brothers, you know. They were just, just so nice. Or when you dated, they were just really polite. There was never any any overt sexual advances or anything, you know. Were you treating Marines or Navy or both? I, I dated both. In fact, I ended up marrying a Marine. And uh, good taste, huh? Yeah, we lasted. <laughs> yeah, we lasted a couple of years. <laughs> well, I wanted. Uh, I was coming near my discharge date, and I didn't really didn't want to go home. And uh, so I had met this handsome marine, and we started dating. And just one day, he said, "Let's get married." I said, "Okay." Mm -hmm. So this is why you're at Camp Lejeune. This is at Camp Lejeune. But come to find out, after my divorce, my ex-mother-in-law told me that he married me on the rebound, and I to make his ex-girlfriend jealous. Mm -hmm. So we were only married two years, but we had a son. It was my oldest son, mm -hmm. and uh, but no, they they were just so nice. And going to visit different places, um, Virginia Beach, you were there. What was the beach like when you were there? You could go out and sit on the boardwalk, and uh, you, you couldn't sleep on the beach overnight, which I tried. <laughs> <laughs> which I did. <laughs> did you? Yes, at that time, Virginia Beach was it, a beach. It had no places to eat, no places to stay, and I, lots of times, because... Uh, uh, we worked the night shift, we took turns rotating on the night shifts. And so my girlfriends and I would drive drive out to the beach and, and sleep out on the beach all day. And just one time we we spent the night overnight and uh, on the beach. On the beach, yeah. <laughs> but there was absolutely nothing and that's why I was so surprised years later in later in nineteen seventy eight we moved to Virginia and had the occasion, we're just a few miles from the beach, and I absolutely could not believe it was nothing but wall-to-wall -wall people. Yeah, I was and there in 66. Uh, we went down to one end of the beach and went skinny dipping one night. Did you, <laughs> did you ever try that? Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> no, but sleeping on the sand is not advisable, I tell you, in bathing suits. <laughs> but we spent a lot of our time out on the beach because there's nothing to do there, you know. There's yeah. nothing. And same way at Camp, I'm found, sure you found out at Camp Lejeune, nothing to do. But they did have in the little towns um, three two joints, and that's all they had. You, mm -hmm. If you wanted hard liquor, which I didn't, you had to go to a private club. Mm -hmm. But uh, I tried sitting outside watching the drive-in movies or the set-in movies. But the mosquitoes, you know, it was just too much. And we had a beautiful indoor swimming pool and outdoor swimming pools. And the same way at Portsmouth, we'd have an hour for lunch. And I would go swimming there. And um, 
around that time, I wore what they call a poodle haircut. I don't know if you know what that is. It, little it. ringlets. It was called the poodle haircut. I well, I had that. one of those. In fact, one of my pictures I have is shows me with it. And it needed trimming, and my, quote, so-called girlfriend, <laughs> different girlfriend at the time, started trimming my hair. And when I got through, I had one inch long hair. <laughs> <laughs> and I would go swimming, and one of the right next to our area where the women patients were was the men's um, hepatitis ward. But there was this one gentleman that would sit there, and uh, he'd see me coming by every day. He says, "You know, you look like a darn rat." <laughs> but they decided instead of calling me a rat, they called me Mousy. And that nickname stuck the whole time I was in the military. I don't think anybody really knew my name. <laughs> it was Mousy. So you ditched that right away when you got out, probably. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but on my trunk that I'd had since boot camp, I got Mousy on there. My son has my trunk. <laughs> but, but that's where that name came from. Mousy, though. yeah. I look like a drowned rat. And in between, I, I had three white mice. One of the girls worked in the labs, and uh, yeah. she gave, there was three of us girls, and each one got a, a, a white mouse, you know, those big old lab, lab mice, mm -hmm. you know. And one was blank, and one had a, a tincture of iodine stripe, a brown stripe, down the back, and the other one had a, a tincture of uh, Venetian violet, it's a purple stripe. So started out, all three of us each had our own because we had cubicles, not rooms, just cubicles of our own. Mm -hmm. And I ended up with all three mice. <laughs> <laughs> and I kept them in a box. And they passed inspection, you know, I, don't know, I had them for a long time, but finally they disappeared. I don't know why. <laughs> These were like lab rats, where they are. Yeah, yeah great, pretty good size. Yeah, okay, pretty good yeah. size. But I, I would go up, up into our lounge area with one of them on my shoulder and the girls they sort of leave because <laughs> <laughs> i was i took psychology in college one time and we had the lab, the lab rats mm -hmm. you know and so we'd befuddle them and confuse them and yeah Aww. <laughs> but what of the people that you met are there some that you still keep in touch with no unfortunately not this one girl friend that got me in trouble we got in trouble at camp of june also uh <laughs> Because see, at Portsmouth, we were non-com, but we could date officers, which I did. I dated d doctors. Mm -hmm. They didn't care, but Camp Lejeune was totally different. We were not allowed to mingle with, with uh, officers. Mm -hmm. But one night we went out to, my girlfriend and I went out to a bar and met two officers. And they said, let's go back on the base. And he said, well, we're really not, don't have to are not allowed to. Oh, and we know a, one of the bars way back in the boonies, then guess what happens? We no sooner walked in and sat down than, than the barracks I lived in was all women Marines, not naval personnel. Well, there's only a few of us left. Uh -huh. And there sat Captain Mock, female captain. She spotted us, and we got a captain's mass out of that. <laughs> and uh, I ended up scrubbing the floors, and she was doing toilets, and we were restricted to the barracks for, a, it was a month. But every so many hours, we had to get totally in uniform and walk just up to the front of the building and report in the same way at the, the clinic or the outpatient's infirmary. Yeah. We would have to report in. Oops. And so... Yeah. Uh, after I got divorced and moved back to Denver, uh, she had been married and had two children. She was divorced, and for some, I don't know, she was from Georgia, and that's, uh, her real name was Mahala, but everybody called, by, it seemed like everybody ended up calling each other by the states where, where they came from, you know, instead of your names, it was the states, you know, and uh, she ended up there in Denver, and we were together for just a little while. But then, being you know young mothers, we just sort of went our way. And, and I, I get out my album from boot camp and, and look at the pictures and wonder, 
where they are, you know. Mm -hmm. And one of my girlfriends that I went through boot camp with, she had been going to nursing school prior to being in boot camp. And when we were uh, going through medical training, she met a sailor. And uh, right at the end of our, our nine months, they got married and she got pregnant. Back in those, deliberately, hmm. back in those days, you're pregnant, you're out. Got you discharged. Discharged because my sister that was in, in the Navy, she uh, ended up divorced her first husband and had married a sailor. But um, they had one child, and he was unfortunately on a ship uh, out of Charleston, South Carolina, that collided with another hospital ship. It was the Ho Hobson and the Wasp. And he was on board. He was a fireman down below. And uh, they never got their maze. But she came back, back to Denver. This was before I had, I had gone in. And uh, she wanted to go back into the service, and they said, no, you, you'll have to adopt your son out. Because uh, you had children, you're not, you know, you weren't allowed. That so sure, that sure has changed now. Oh, yes, yes. Well, that, that time when you were talking about being up in, uh, up in Virginia, mm -hmm. and you got in trouble, and they sent you down to Camp Lejeune, mm -hmm. what kind of trouble were you in? Uh, just from going off base without, w without, yeah. And mm -hmm. when we got up to Camp to Lejeune, that's when we ended up with our uh, scrubbing the floors and doing the <laughs> toilets and. and <laughs> but the other one, the captain's mast, uh, very lenient, you know, uh -huh. and uh, just the restrictions that that we couldn't go off base at all. What kind of what kind of ailments were you treating? Uh, uh, typical, uh, like an outpatient emergency room, uh -huh. uh, giving shots to to babies, babies that were brought in with uh, high temperatures, you know, and we'd give them. I don't know if they're still doing or not. Ice baths, so we get a big basin of ice and water, and just dip them in and out, and. Uh, Treating dog bites, treating um, just typical women coming in, their husbands have been out to sea and they come in to be checked if they're pregnant <laughs> before their husbands come back, you know. <laughs> we had a lot of them. <laughs> before the husbands came back. Uh -huh, uh -huh. I mean, you know, if they've been overseas for a long time, you know. Uh, that'd be and, a good piece um, of information to have. <laughs> yeah, so, no, just like a regular ER, everything that went on, it was, it was strictly uh, outpatient. And then they, for the sailors, they or the Marines, they had one little uh, above us a, a ward, mm -hmm. I think it was 10 or 12 beds ward. Now, were you, were you getting any of the Korean War veterans coming back, some of the wounded, mm -hmm. from, any of that? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. No. And the, uh, Mainly dependents. Mainly dependence. It was all dependence, yeah. I don't like I said, except, yeah, we did not deal with, this, with the men at all. This was strictly where we were, and then across the street they had the children's, the uh, infants, their own special uh, area that they were treated. Did you feel fully trained to handle the kind of situations that you had to deal with? At the time, yeah. Mm -hmm. At the time, and i got to tell you this. <laughs> My kids get a kick out of it. Uh, there was this one lady dependent that liked to come in, but she would usually be under the weather drunk. And under the uh, weather, they call that under the weather. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> we got into a argument because the women dependents did not like female sailors at all, mm -hmm. and. You know, obviously we had a name, you know, they call us whatever. But anyway, she and I tangled. We were on the floor punching each other out. <laughs> and they had to pull her off of me. I didn't get in trouble with it, but she got banned from the infirmary. So how did the argument start? Because she was calling me names, uh -huh. you know, uh -huh. vulgar, vulgar names, you know which I did not like at all. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're just a little mite of a lady. You, you yeah, know. she was just 
big fat cow. <laughs> But I didn't get in trouble with it. They all yeah. laughed, and every morning we'd meet in the break room, you know, and, and yeah. everybody knew about it, you know. So, <laughs> so. It was in the afternoon. It wasn't regular clinic hours. We'd have to, certain days, stay after, you know, yeah. to be open. We were open till 9 o'clock, I think, you know, when she came in. Yeah. But uh, So as your, as your enlistment... So you went in, what what was the date when you went in, in 50? 53, July 9th, 20th, 53, and got out. I got out a few months, because I got married in June, the latter part of June, so I took my vacation days. Uh -huh. But the actual discharge date was July 19th, 57. Did you give any consideration to re-upping? Just yeah, like, I could have gone on to RN school, and they would have paid for it, and then I in turn would pay them back. But at that point, I was just tired, you know. Yeah. And like I said, I just met a Marine. <laughs> <laughs> but I did have an opportunity to be on board ship. That was the only one. It was a hospital ship out of Port of New York called Hope. And what they it did would go overseas to pick up the dependents, women dependents, and children, mm -hmm. and bring them back. And when I was first stationed there, I was there about two years. There were I think it was eight or ten of us women female waves. And as the years went by, they all left one way or the other. But a bunch of them went on on board the ship Hope. And my at the time I was working in with the children, and my head nurse there said. Because she knew I, I have, um, I, I get dizzy real easy, motion sickness. She said, you never make it. You know, she said, you don't want to go on board a ship. And, but uh, you really did. Huh? I, I really did, but she talked me out of it. So, mm -hmm. But that was the only opportunity I, I had uh, as far as going overseas. They just didn't offer the women at the time, okay. and one of a couple of my girlfriends, they're they're more adventurous than I was. They would catch the hot planes and go to Bermuda. <laughs> and uh, at they that time, them, Bermuda shorts were just coming in. Yeah, oh. <laughs> and I was always, I've been sort of a fraidy cat all my life of doing something wrong. I, no, what if we missed the plane? You know, what if we, you know, what if we did this and what if we did that? You know. Yeah. They never, they always caught the hops and went over and caught the hops coming back. It was never late reporting in, you know. <laughs> so. It would have been a little bit and you would have probably gotten the, the gumption to do that. Yeah. They were just a few years older than me, so. <laughs> yeah. But they went on to become um, x-ray techs, I think. They left the base, become x-ray techs. So what happened after after you got out in 57, mm -hmm. then you got married? I was married, yeah. Went back to Colorado? Right. No, I, I moved in with my husband's mother in Ohio, where I had my first child oh, there in Ohio. We're about in Ohio. And uh, two years of Mary's last, he bought me a ticket for me and my son, and said goodbye. Mm -hmm. So we went back to Colorado, and I started um, looking for jobs. Even though I had, and after I got out of the military, I worked at a hospital. Uh, back then, I'd never even heard of what they call back east LVNs, licensed vocational nurses, mm -hmm. as opposed to uh, nowadays licensed practical nurse, which I, I became. But I worked at a hospital there. But back in Denver, I uh, went on to a uh, county hospital. That, County of uh, Denver County had a um, can't think of her name, but anyway, it was a program for people that that didn't have much money, you know, and mm -hmm. couldn't afford to go to school. Emily Griffith's Opportunity School, that's what it was was called, okay. and uh, for a year, and they paid for everything: your your uniforms, a stipend, and everything. That's where I I got my training, but. I got better training in the nine months of military school than I did, I felt anyway, than, than I did going to the year, but uh, going the year to be an LPN. And that's all I, I did the rest of my life. And so why was the training better in the military? It was just more complex. It was just more complex. Like 
we had pharmacy where we had because the military made their own pharmaceutical pills. You know, they had the, the APCs. Did they have those when you were in all-purpose capsules? But they were big old APCs. I don't remember that. That's for headaches, for everything. You know, so they were called. But they actually, we had to make. When they became a pharmacist in the military, that's what they did. They made all the medications. They didn't buy hardly anything oh, back in those days. I don't remember days. APCs. Yeah. So, but uh, it, was, it was just more complex, you know. And so you got a lot more out of it because yeah, it was more challenging. Yeah, yeah it was, yeah. yeah. So you went back to Colorado and then... Um, Set up household there. Then, I or? lived with moved in with my parents. Your parents, okay. And uh, and was divorcee till I, I met my my second husband. And uh, come to find out, well, he was guarding prisoners. They at the time the county jail didn't have their own area, and they had uh, they weren't really employ they were employees, but but they were not sheriffs. Uh, they were uh, civilians, which he was. He, he eventually went on to become a, a, a deputy sheriff. But they would guard the prisoners right there in the wards. And I worked on the orthopedic ward. And I ran into my uh, second husband there, and we got to talk on And come to find out, I had lived on the same street he did for a year. <laughs> mm -hmm. We went to not the same grade schools, but back in Denver we had five high schools, north, south, east, and west, and Manuel. And we went to the same junior high, we went to the same high school. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he remembers me, but I, I had no interest in boys. <laughs> mm -hmm. So I don't remember him, but we ended up, we were married, and uh, he's, I've been a widow for two years now. We were married 49 years. Wow. When when you were in uh, as a as a female, did, were, did you were, did you feel respected or did you feel? I yes, mean, I did. did That's what did. I said. It's so different than it is now. I keep reading all these stories about how the women are being raped, and and no, they that absolutely mm -hmm. not. They didn't have any. Like I said, their guys treated us like brothers, you know, and Good. and. Uh, I never had had any problems. Even the doctors I dated were nice. <laughs> <laughs> even the even the doctors. Uh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I if I had to do it all over again, I would jump. I would jump right in. I I loved every minute of it. You know, I don't know if it was just because I was young and away from home, but. I, I had so much fun, you know, mm -hmm. and uh, and, I, and I read the stories, that, but of course then we weren't being sent overseas either, you know, we were stateside, but I, I just loved every minute of it. If you had a chance to do it over again, would you extend and oh, make, yeah. make a career yeah. out of it? Oh yeah, would yeah, I, I would, yeah. What would be the benefit of that? Pardon? What would be the benefit of that? Fun. <laughs> 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 I don't know. Yeah. It was just so different. Denver and, and is so backwards, you know. Yeah. I one young uh, guy I was dating for a while. I told him where I was from. Denver, like, where the heck is that? <laughs> <laughs> and this was, you know, a big like uh, North Carolina, the one of the biggest Marine Corps bases, you know. And, and you felt proud, you know, and. Um, I just, you know, I've never, ever been ashamed of being in the military. Never. Never will be. Have you felt proud about that? I being feel in proud there? of that, yes. Yeah. And it's, I still walk that way, like I'm in, in cadence. <laughs> yeah. It stays with you. It does. It does. Yeah. It stays with you. Yeah. So if, if you had a young, you know, if, if you were making a presentation to, uh, a group of high school seniors now that uh, were sort of thinking through career choices and things. What what would you tell them? Go for it. I try to get my daughter. <laughs> I, I had two boys and one girl. I tried to get her to go into it, but she wouldn't. Didn't even think anything about it. But I, I think it's excellent training. 
regardless of you know the sexual harassment. I think it's excellent training. What I got out of it was our first home, my second husband, our first home I bought on the GI loan. You didn't have to make the home. Because he went in, a, my husband was a year younger than I, and he was uh, went in a year after I did. And when he got out, they were not eligible for the what I had, the, the, uh, the GI loans, for some odd reason. And so uh, we got married in, in 63, and we bought our home. And then a couple of years down the road, the government changed their mind and decided, you know, they could. But uh, while I was going to school, I was still getting a, a, a stipend from a government loan. I mean, not a loan. I was being paid to go to school. And then later on, after my kids were all in school, I went to college, a community college, and that was paid for. You know, I don't know what they do nowadays, but uh, that's what, what they did. Mm -hmm. But no, I would say go for it because it's, it's different. It's a different life, you know, and you get so much out of it, mm -hmm. you know. Do you have a feeling one way or the other about women serving in combat? I don't think they should. Mm -hmm. I, I really don't, you know. What's that saying? Men are from Mars and women are from someplace, you know? We're, obviously, you know, we're totally different sexes. And no, I don't think that they should be. Uh, just like the women, when we were in the military, they didn't go overseas, I mean, except as nurses. Yeah. And no, I, I do not think they should be out there. Even a lot of women think they should. I don't think that they should be out there fighting. Why? 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 Because they're a woman. Mm -hmm. That's why. Okay. Isn't that good enough? <laughs> <laughs> it's good enough for me if it's good enough for you. Because you know, I know. No, there's too many jobs in the military. Too many jobs that they can do without being out there fighting. You know. Well, I've got two daughters, and I would not like to have them out there fighting. Mm -mm. You know. Well, that was the same way if my son had been of the age to go. My oldest son wasn't of the age to go to uh, Vietnam, and he missed it. And the same way if my youngest, my other son had been of the age, like I told Kim, I'm sorry, I'm a mother first. I would have taken him to Canada. Yeah. Yeah. You know, even though I was born on Armistice Day. I <laughs> <laughs> had a good day I have, on my father's side, I have an ancestor that fought in the Revolutionary War. And uh, so my background, is, as far as the military, you know, goes way back there, you know. And it sounds like you have quite a few who served in the military mm -hmm. just within the yeah. last two generations. My dad was in, in, in the Army, and he was in uh, stationed in Hawaii, and but he was... 42 years old when I was born, so he missed the wars, but he was in, in the army. He was stationed over there, yeah. and uh, so... Well, you say people who missed the war, but you know, it's like they signed up and they were there. And that they, was it, and yeah. And they were ready to do their, their that part. That was it, yeah. You know. and my brother was in the Navy. He went in a year ahead of me. He loved it, too. Uh -huh. And. Uh, I'd never say anything bad about the military, never. Would you go back in the Navy, or would yes. you do uh, something else? No, yeah, <laughs> Navy, no, I don't yeah. care for the other, you know. Yeah, you sound and, good. Uh, I, I found out a few things about the women <laughs> Marines, you know. Uh, uh, we're called because of our W-A-V-E-S, do you know what that stands for? Women, no. Women accepted for emergency service. Women ex accepted, accepted for emergency, W-A, Woman Accepted Voluntary Emergency Service okay. is, is what, what it started out. And the same way, I don't know what the women Marines, but before I went into service, we always called them BAMs, mm -hmm. Broad-Ass Marines. <laughs> 
I think we've had that conversation. <laughs> I did not know that that wasn't, you know, that a BAM was not their, you was know, official. I found out yeah. from some of those women Marines <laughs> that I had to live with. <laughs> yeah. So w w was there a difference between, like, the women Marines and the women Navy? The, the Marines are strict. Like I said, I lived in the barracks with them. They were strict. They all had to wear, obviously, the same uniforms, but on, on their caps, the color, I can't sort of a reddish color, their lipstick had to match their bands of their caps. Mm. This is back in the 50s when basically everybody's lipstick, we all wore red, all the other colors didn't come in until they, they had to wear that. They had to wear, this is in North Carolina mm -hmm. and in the south, in the, in the summertime, it gets sort of hot and damp there. They had to wear their nylons all the time. We didn't. We could go with, <laughs> without our nylon. They all had to wear girdles, regardless. And this Captain Mock tried to get us waves to wear girdles. Didn't work. <laughs> our, 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 our admirals that, mm, you know. <laughs> but I mean, they were very, every morning they would have morning quarters where they would have to line up for inspection. Yeah. And, uh, we weren't the best of friends. I had a, a few real, real good friends that were Marines, but uh, most of them, and, and they didn't work in the clinics. They were, they were dispensed everywhere on the base. They didn't work in the clinics, which is the Navy, and we had a couple uh, civilian nurses to work there. And, and uh, so, how, if your paths didn't cross, how did you come to meet some of the Marine? Well, since we since I I lived in the same barracks, we just got to be oh, good I friends. See. Yeah, okay. Okay. yeah, good friends. And it was all one big open room. I, I can't remember how many dozens of bunk beds. And I ended up they had they had one one semi private room. And at the when I was first stationed there, the gal that was an X-ray tech. And then when she got a, a promotion. Uh, she moved on for the, you know, on to the elite section, <laughs> and uh, my girlfriend, one of the other girls, actually the one that kept getting me in trouble, <laughs> she and I ended up with this semi-private room, and then when she got married and left, and actually I was the last wave there at the, infir at the infirmary. I'm sure they were starting to get more, but they had, when I got stationed there, there was about 10 of us. And like I said, they all went married or elsewhere, different training and different places. But I was the last one there. And uh, so... Ever, ever? No, just when I left. Just when you left, okay. <laughs> I'm sure they, they had to, because at the clinic, it was all military staff. The doctor mm -hmm. was military. We had one civilian nurse RN, but the rest of us were all military. Got quite a story to tell. <laughs> I love telling anybody that listen to it. <laughs> so, if if someone was if if a young lady was thinking about going into the military, you would definitely say go for it. it. Yes, yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And Think of your opportunities. You know, and money is such a situation now. You know, kids go to school. You know, and they get out and. You can't find jobs, you know. My grand, oldest granddaughter just got out of college, and she was fortunate enough to get a job right in the first week, even before she was out of college, she was offered a job. But she was fortunate, you know. And But so many kids, they're just sort of floating around, not knowing what they want to do. And I, I do, you know, guys and, and you know. T tell me a little bit about this commendation. Oh, <laughs> for nursing care. We in Portsmouth we had a a, a patient, uh, Mrs. Cor Cora, was her name, and when she was admitted as a patient, they th didn't really know what was wrong with her. She was acting psychotic. Come to find out, she had viral encephalitis, and that's from a bite from a certain mosquito, uh -huh. and she was in an iron lung. And she had the uh, 24 hours, obviously 24 hours around the clock, 
And this is what we did. We took care of her until she never walked out, but she was in a, in a wheelchair and fairly coherent. And But that was my first and only experience with an iron lung. And we were, had accommodation. I got it from the big muck muck up there <laughs> in, in D.C. I should have brought it in, but that was one piece of paper I'm not getting rid of, you know. But, and we had our pictures in the paper. I, I had that my picture. Uh, uh, there was four of us. And uh, it was sent to the home state. My mother gave me, you know, sent me the... We've got the picture of us getting our award. Was it was that because viral encephalitis was so rare or so deadly? It's or? because they normally didn't live, you know. Yeah, and, and we didn't know what was wrong with her, and she was just in a, in a regular ward. And uh, after we found out what was wrong, we had to wear total, you know, cap the gown, ever uh -huh. everything. She she was moved to a storeroom by herself. And it was just a, uh, just not, just a word, just the care that we gave her, you know, because we, she was the only patient I'd ever had, uh, in an iron lung. How, how does an iron lung work? Because when I was a kid with poli, you know, with polio mm -hmm, was big, mm -hmm. and and iron lungs were fairly, con you'd see them on TV mm -hmm. or you'd hear about them. And stuff. Okay, you you seen you know what they basically look like a, a big tube. Yeah. Well, they had the would be like a billow underneath, and, and they breathed for them. Instead of them, them doing their own breathing, it, it would breathe. And they had the trach, uh -huh. and uh, the portals that you put your arms through to take care of them. And that, that's where I can't remember how long she was in there. So those billows would co actually physically compress mm -hmm. the Compare the air and the air. That was in there, yeah. Okay. okay. What what took what takes the place of an iron lung now? Um. Well. Like just re the respirator. Probably the respirators. Yeah, yeah. yeah okay. We had. I didn't see the patient, but at the time you're talking about the polio. Um, we had a doctor that contracted polio, uh, he died. His wife got it, and they put her in there along. She lived. I, I, I was just told about her because she was in the main hospital, not where I was. But uh, when I was working in, in the main hospital with, with the babies, it was my job to take the, uh, I worked in the premature nursery, it was my job uh, to take the deceased babies over to the morgue. And one day when I was over there, the, the corpsman says, hey, you want to see Dr. So-and-so's brain? <laughs> <laughs> sure. <laughs> sure. <laughs> so, That's not the answer I expected. <laughs> But she was Actually, this it lady is. that was in the, in the iron lung was pregnant at the time, but they, they both lived. Seriously. Wow. And and uh, because, like I so said, that was in, in the 53, probably 54, when, when the, it was very prevalent, you know. Yeah. And they don't have the, the iron lungs, but that's the only one I ever saw was, was there. So, But that was my experience for that. Well, I remember with polio back in the early mid fifties. You know that uh, my mother mm -hmm. was terrified of letting us go to a public pool. You know, because of the yeah. threat of, of polio. Yeah, the lake that we used to go swimming in was condemned. We couldn't swim in the lake anymore, mm -hmm. and uh, which broke our hearts. We had to go to the uh, like the YMCA or someplace like that. We wanted to go swimming. Yeah. I see your, your rank. Uh, of course, I wasn't Navy, uh, you know, but HM three, HM third class, third class, the bottom of the rank. <laughs> what, 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 can you equate that to like what a E one or E two or? Well, what's E one? Is that the bottom when you get out of boot camp? Like private, yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's that's kind of the same grade. thing. Yeah. yeah, because at at the time that old saying. 
uh, old chiefs never die. <laughs> they just go to heaven, never. Uh, old soldiers. I took the test, yeah. you know, but there, at the time there was no openings, you know, and you have to have an opening yeah. to get yeah. your rank. And, and like the gal that got the, oh, she was the, our only female x-ray tech. And so she, she got to, I think she was second second class, first class. My brother was first class when he got out because he was an aerial photographer in the Navy. But he said, how come you didn't go up and rank? I said, no, there was no openings, you know, you can take all the tests, but if, if there's nobody, you know, yeah. just like the chiefs, unless they go on up, nobody can Well, <coughs> it's, the, it's the same for any other team, you know, mm -hmm. if you don't have an opening for your skill, then exactly. you don't yeah. get a chance to, to go yeah. into that spot, uh -huh. you know, so. So I was happy. I yeah. mean, you know, I had everything paid for. <laughs> yeah. It does sound like you were happy with it. I was. It I, I was. Out. Yeah. I, yeah. I really was. You know, everything was, I didn't have a car, but there was, I grew up, we didn't have a car. We caught buses everywhere or walked, you know, mm -hmm. and my girlfriends had the car so we could go to the beach whenever, you know, but, uh. I, I was, you know, perfectly content and uh, didn't save a cent. <laughs> <laughs> there probably weren't too many pennies floating around anyway, were there? <laughs> no, no, but, but uh, I think nowadays the military is applied to their Social Security. Back in those days we had our Social Security cards, but it was not applied because I still have my form you know, from from the uh, Social Security office yeah. from all the years, you know, the monies that I made. And nothing, those four years, nothing went to Social Security. Yeah, I can't remember mine. I know my millet, my millet I made $98 a month, mm -hmm. and it's listed on my Social Security, Medicare. Okay, so that was after we were, yeah. You yeah, know, that would have been in 66. Yeah. So just shortly afterwards. Is there anything that we forgot? to talk about or anything? I don't think so. Anything no. that you uh, would like to, I mean, are there people or experiences that uh, we have kind of, we've kind of jumped around a little bit. That's okay. <laughs> yeah, it is okay. And it's a, it usually no. a lot of stuff comes yeah, out that way. Yeah. Oh, boot camp. Oh. We, we skipped right over boot camp. <laughs> we, <laughs> yeah. Especially oh, that bath okay. that you would take the... The what? That bath you said you would take the pussy ass in. I don't know what you're trying to tell me. <laughs> oh, okay. I was the youngest and my mother didn't really spoil me, but she didn't want me bothering me to learn things. So, I went into the military not knowing how to iron. I tried to iron a shirt once and burned it. <laughs> so, after we get our uniforms and we're having more than an inspection, I didn't pass inspection. And so, my commanding officer, Chief Roush was her name, real lovely lady, she said, take this lady back to the barracks and teach her how to iron. <laughs> I was so embarrassed. I didn't know how to do anything, you know. But uh, I, I don't know what you want to tell me. But one time I ended up to the infirmary overnight because uh, we were supposed to wear our slippers to and from the, uh, the shower rooms. And this particular night, it was night before inspection, and they were one of the gals was using the buffing machines. I don't know if I ever told you that or not. Using the buffing machines. And I didn't have shoes on, slippers on, and I got clipped on the back of my heel with the buffing machine. So I didn't have to have stitches, but I spent the night in the infirmary, so I ended up in what they call, it was the... A scragglers at the end because we marched everywhere every place we went we marched and and uh, they had a name for it I can't think of it anymore but uh, we had our, our duties for like uh, cleaning out the cigarette the cigarette butts from from the the barrels and put gloves on and clean them out and 
we did all all of the everything to be done in, in the in boot camp. And so where was boot camp? Bainbridge, Maryland. In Maryland. So you, how did you get from Colorado to Maryland? Train. By train. They they ha I, I had one gal. She was from Kansas, but they didn't have a, a um, enlistment area there. So she she drove to to Denver, and she and I. Uh, I think it was two nights on, on the train, uh -huh. but they had the um, beds, the, the seats that make it into bunks. I'd never oh. seen one before. Have you seen, you know? Yeah. They, they flip up, you know? Yeah. And, and so, no, they, they, they paid for everything going out, and then the same way uh, after boot camp, we went back on, on the train, and then after that, wherever we wanted to go was our own monies. But uh, I know one year, uh, I think I was in Virginia, uh, Christmas time, and we had to go from Denver to Chicago, and uh, everything's prearranged, and uh, somehow they overbooked us military, I mean they overbooked, and us military got dumped from the trains and put on a bus from Chicago to Denver. But we were all in uniform, you know, very proud of it. From but Chicago to Denver. From Chicago to Denver on a bus, yeah. Was, was that like after your enlistment? Yeah. Oh, mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, I was, okay. I think then I was at Portsmouth. Mm -hmm. what's, a, what's a quick bath? Oh, no! I'm not going to say that one, no! <laughs> No, ma'am. No, sir. <laughs> Did it have something to do with school, like a PTA or something? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know, when my girlfriend and I got stationed in North Carolina, uh -huh. we were, it's damp there, but for some reason we became, our skin was so dried out. And I'm not going to say the words, but we were so dried out, so I went to the dermatologist because, uh -huh. you know, it was just like, like I am now, only we were just shedding, you know? Yeah. And doctor told me to take a PTA, and I'm not telling you what that is. <laughs> well, you know, Use your own imagination. <laughs> I know, and, and the Marines TNA has a certain meaning, and, uh, uh, and I'll, we'll just leave the rest to other people's Even as imagination. it is, yes. Yeah. <laughs> imagination is good. <laughs> I mean, I can tell it to my family, but I'm not telling it to the country. <laughs> <laughs> and people I told that to, they, they were shocked. They said, a doctor told you that? Yeah. I said, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you did have a good time, didn't you? I did. You did. I really did. <laughs> <laughs> okay, oh, anything else? Uh, you, did we for, did we I don't think so, or? no. But again, anybody, you know, I would advise them, definitely go into the military, because there's so much advantage there, you know, so much. Yeah. Travel and nowadays they can travel overseas. They don't have to be on a just on a hospital ship, you know. Yeah. So, but. Uh, well, Rosemary, I want to thank you. Uh, I thank you very much for for agreeing to tell us your story and your family. You know, it, it honors your service, but it's mm -hmm. also the family has a chance now to know just more about you. <laughs> you know, and I think the more they know, the better. I mean, it's right? Just yeah. Well, they've heard all my little stories, most of them, you know. Mm -hmm. But yeah. uh, to share, to share with the the public, you know. Yeah. Well, what? Thank you for your service. I thank you for interviewing me yeah. very much. Bye. <laughs>